the mantra from number 10. Unlocking is about data and not dates. And this is the data it all hinges on. Released without fanfare last night on the government's website, the first real-world figures looking at how well vaccines interact with the so-called Indian variant and whether they can stop you developing COVID symptoms. The effectiveness, once you've had two jabs, is essentially the same. And that is good news because it means that we can be confident that our national strategy for dealing with this pandemic is on track and is the right one. Public Health England revealed two doses of either the AstraZeneca or Pfizer jab are highly effective against symptomatic COVID. Pfizer providing 88% protection compared to 93% against the Kent variant that's dominated since Christmas. And AstraZeneca 60% instead of 66%. But good news tempered by bad three weeks after a first dose, both vaccines are just 33% effective. The World Health Organization says COVID jabs should be at least 50% effective in order to be worthwhile. I think it just reinforces the need to get fully vaccinated um, and it reinforces the need to be careful and cautious after one dose of the vaccine. Will this new data change the way that we are vaccinating people? Do you think you'll start reducing that time lag or prioritising second doses over extending it to younger people? Whilst we've got this uh, highly transmissible uh, B617.2 variant that originated in India, we believe that if we can get those vulnerable communities immunised with their second dose quicker than we had planned, although their longer term protection may not be as good, the trade-off will be that they will be well protected against this particular variant. 60 million doses have now been given out in the UK and over 32s in England are allowed to join the queue. The race is on to get second doses into arms ahead of the June the 21st expiry date for COVID restrictions. The Indian variant had put that timeline under threat. Next week, the PM will confirm whether it'll go ahead. This new data at the heart of that decision. Well, the controversy over whether the government originally had a herd immunity plan to tackle the pandemic was reignited today by Boris Johnson's former adviser, Dominic Cummings. Our health and social care editor, Victoria MacDonald, is in the newsroom now with the latest for us. Victoria. Yes, well, I think that there are probably some people in Downing Street right now who would be wishing that Dominic Cummings had been kept on the inside and rather than casting him loose, because this is a man who is on a Twitter mission to attack the government, its scientific advisers and the health and social care editor, Matt Hancock. In fact, few are escaping his scorn right now. Now, just to put this in context, Mr Cummings is due to give evidence to the uh, Select Committee inquiry on lessons learned from the pandemic this Wednesday. In advance of that, he has done a big data and Twitter Twitter drop. It's been going on and on and on. Critically, in advance, he has said via Twitter that herd immunity was the official policy ditched less than a fortnight before the lockdown, before the first lockdown. In tweet number 38, he says it was literally the official plan in all docs, graphs, meetings until it was ditched. And in tweet number 42, he says, num uh, he says, number 10 decided to lie and say herd immunity has never been part of their strategy. Very foolish, he said, and appalling ethics. The plan, he adds, was that the UK could reach herd immunity by September 2020. The reason you can't entirely dismiss any of this is that back in March, we did hear people like Sir Patrick Vallance, the chief scientific officer, discussing herd immunity, although I've gone back several times and had a look at exactly what he said, and it wasn't actually clear that he was advocating herd immunity rather than discussing it. But the fact was it put that phrase out there. Uh, and so it led to the suspicion that it was on the agenda anyway. Anyway, Victoria, just spell out for us, why wouldn't have herd immunity as a strategy worked? Well, because herd immunity uh, has never been done outside using vaccines. And remember uh, that, that, uh, that there were no vaccines back there in March. Uh, I have to say that in Downing Street um, right now, the, they're, they're towing the very same line that this was never part of their strategy and they are denying everything that Dominic Cummings has been saying.